There was one time a big irua in Eretz Yisrael. All of the Chachamim, all of the people that are important in the uh, Torah world were getting together. One of the Gedolei Adol was coming. And the Rashi Yeshivot were coming. And one guy that was a Rosh Yeshiva that was known to be extra strict. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give him a personal shiur. So he arrived a little late. You know, like five minutes after they closed the door. And he's where he wants to go inside. And he says, uh, listen, uh, I'm Rosh Yeshiva. I, I helped arrange the event. I have this. And the guy says, no problem. You have a ticket? No, no, I don't have a ticket. So I'm sorry, I can't let you in. He goes, what do you mean? But I'm this, but I'm that, and that. I'm sorry. He goes, yeah, but my son is with me. He says, your son, you're not son. I can't help you. And he's arguing with the guy for an hour and a half, trying to get in. And he can't believe that he did so much to get this event together, but he cannot see what's going on inside. After an hour and a half, the Gadol that was inside finished speaking and people started running out. <coughs> One of his friends, another Rosh Yeshiva, saw him and goes, Hey, where you been? I didn't see you all night. He goes, Ah, no, come on, I can't believe you. And he gives him every name in the book, every Klala, the Gaushat, the It goes on this guy, poor guy. I can't believe you guys, you should, you should be ashamed of yourself. You didn't check on me. I've been outside. He huh? huh? goes, okay, okay, listen, I understand. Fin you finished? You finished? No, I'm finished. Okay, listen, the rabbi's still inside. He's waiting till everybody leaves, but he's still inside. So come, I'll give you a personal meeting with him to make up for it. You know, yeah, you were outside for an hour and a half after all. Come on, come inside. So he goes inside. The big rabbi says, Shalom Aleichem, and the Rosh Yeshiva says, Ah, yeah, for the rabbi, how are you? All of a sudden, everything's okay. And the friend tells him, Listen, for the rabbi, it's Mamash Kaparat Avonot. This guy just went through, he's been outside for an hour and a half. He's one of the guys that helped arrange. He did this, he did that. He's a Rosh Yeshiva, he's a Ish Chashuv, he's so important. Ah, who, ah. So he thinks, he said, Rabbi, why don't you give him chizuk, you know, because it's tough what he went through. So the guy is excited because he's, he wants to hear chizuk from the gadol adol. So the gadol says to him, can you tell me a little bit what you felt when you were outside? He says, well, Kvod Arav, it felt uh, terrible. No, no, tell me a little bit. I know terrible, but tell me more. How did it feel to be outside? says, well, honestly, I think I don't have to go to Gainum. That's how bad it was. It was so bad to be outside. It was my much like Gainum. Because tell me more. Tell me more. How does it feel to be in Gainum? It's really terrible. I felt alone. I felt miserable. I felt like no one cares. I felt like this. I felt like that. And he starts going into five minutes of describing it. Dola Dol says to him, now let me ask you a question. How many people did you reject this year in your yeshiva when they applied, but they were Sfaradim instead of Ashkenazim? They were Ashkenazim instead of Sfaradim. They were from this Chabad or that Chabad or this Keila or that Keila. How many of them did you reject this year? He says, many. He says, so maybe they feel the same way you did. Did you ever think that they also feel that after you reject them, that they're alone and no one loves them and no one accepts them, and even though they're trying? But just because their grandfather came from the desert and your grandfather came from some country in Europe, that's enough of a reason to reject them. Or maybe because they don't pronounce the, way, the, the word the way you do, and maybe because of they don't have enough money or they don't have enough this, but you decided, no, they don't belong among the rest of us. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you a tikkun in this world. You should say thank you. 
Rabotai Yekarim, the Sinat Chinam doesn't just come from the Sephardi guy doesn't like the Ashkenazi guy, the Ashkenazi guy doesn't like the Sephardi guy, the Yemenite doesn't like anyone because no one knows how to speak. No, it's not just that. It's even among each other. Chazal tells in the Gemara that even if you have one keila, one minyan of people that actually have a chdut, actually have a common goal, actually do not have a machloket, they simply come, they pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The overall mission of the keila is the same. Ten people, Mashiach comes on the spot. Ten people in the entire world. Doesn't say now it's Israel. Anywhere in the world. Now, on one hand, this should encourage us. We should get ten people. On another hand, it's very discouraging that we haven't been able to succeed for two thousand years. So, when it comes to the Torah and Mitzvot, it's not necessarily just learning the Shas by heart or the Gemara or the this one or the that. It's not just about that. It's learning how to apply these things to your life and understanding that when a Kadosh Baruch Hu says something, he's not joking. He's serious. You may not take him seriously, but for sure he's serious. When he said that someone that gets in the way of Torah to stop a you to go against the rabbi, to go against the real Torah because his way, his way is different, he should know that you got in the way of the Torah. In Shemaim, they call that person Au, the worst curse in the Torah. So much so that the rest of Am Yisrael says Amen. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, David, Shlomo, all of them say Amen. To what? To cursing this person that got in the way of the Torah. Why would anybody want such a horrible curse? Why? Because you don't like the way he speaks? Or you don't like the way his hat looks? Or you don't like the way whether he has a beard or he doesn't have a beard? The question is, does he teach Torah or not? Is it true or is it fake? If HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't want people to know it, he wouldn't write it in a Chumash. If he wrote in a Chumash that a Mechalel Shabbat is Mot Yumat, that's what he means. He's not trying to sugarcoat it. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu wrote that somebody that goes against the Shem in different ways has a punishment, that means he wants you to know it. So if somebody's teaching about the parts of the Torah that are not so pleasing to hear about, but a Kadosh Baruch Hu decided to write in the Torah, you going against them is not going against the person, it's going against Hashem. The, 